Hello, my dear students. So uh, today we are in the last part of the third chapter that is uh, the mole concept. Okay, so after uh, discussing about the mole concept, again, it's like a continuation. Okay, so chapter third, we are studying about the atoms and molecules, right? Now, uh, chapter four is about the structure of atoms. So in chapter three, what we discuss is all about the size, the mass, right? And how it forms a compound, right? So now we are in the last topic that is mole concept, okay? Mole concept. So many students, many students get confused with this mole, okay? But before I discuss about this, if I say one dozen, okay? If I say one dozen of banana or one dozen of apple or anything, then uh, uh, if I say one dozen of apple, then number 12 comes to your mind, right? Without anyone saying anything, you know that in one dozen, there is 12 number, right? Or suppose one gross. One gross means there are 144 number. Clear? 144 number. In a dozen, you know that there is 12, right? And in a gross, you know that there is 144. So now one mole is also just like one dozen or one gross, okay? Now one mole, okay? In one mole, okay? In one mole, there are this much number, my dear students, 6.02 to 10 to the raised power, power 23, okay? In one mole, we have this much number, 6.02 and 10 to the power 23. And this number you have to keep in mind, students. Because till class 12 chemistry, you are going to study about this. Clear? And this number is known as Avogadro's number. Clear? It is known as Avogadro's, Avogadro's number. Or it is also known as Avogadro's constant. Clear? So this in one mole, how many numbers we have? 6.022 into 10 to the power 23. So now if I say one mole of carbon atom, means if I say one mole of carbon atom, then we'll have this much uh, particles, carbon atoms. Clear? Now from here, one formula I want to give you, and this formula is important, clear? This formula is important because we'll be solving these two numerical question. Clear? How to convert into mole and uh, how to calculate the mass. So I have written two questions here. So now the formula would be very simple. So that is N. This is given mass, okay students, by molar mass. So students here, N means the mole, okay? N means number of moles. This N means number of moles. Number of moles. And this is the given mass and this is the molar mass, right? Now for this molar mass, we have discussed yesterday how to uh, get a, cal uh, how to calculate, right? So now by using this formula, we can solve these two questions. So in this, in this chapter, in the third chapter, the first numerical that we have discussed is how to calculate the molecular mass, right? Now the second uh, numerical is uh, about conversion. And a third numerical will be uh, to calculate the mass. But all these calculations we can easily get by uh, using this formula, okay? So we will apply this formula and then we'll find out this answer. Okay, so students, let's say this is question one, okay? This is question one. So answer to question one. Now, uh, we have to convert 12 gram of oxygen into mole. Right, we have to convert 12 gram of oxygen into mole. So now, uh, 
let me tell you that one mole, one mole of atom, okay, one mole of any atom, let's say carbon atom, one mole of carbon atom, okay, or any atom we can give so, uh, one mole of any atom would be equal to gram atomic mass, okay. So now we'll apply the formula. Now the, the formula that I've given you just now is number of mole is given mass by molar mass, right? So students, in this question, the, the first question, we have to find out this N, okay? Now given mass, given mass means they have already given, right? They have said that it is 12 gram of oxygen. Okay, they have said that it is 12 gram of oxygen. That means here we'll write 12, okay? So given mass is 12. And then molar mass means we have to take the molecular mass of this oxygen. Clear? So, we'll, we'll continue here. That is, N is, now the given mass is 12. Clear. Now the molar mass is oxygen, it is, uh, the atomic mass is 16, right students, is 16. But how many ox oxygen we have now? Two. So it will be 32. 16 into 2, 32. Now, by dividing these two, we will get the answer. Clear? So we, we can get uh, 2 into 6. 216, 23, 28. Okay, so you can leave like this, it's okay. So we can say that the number of mole is 3 upon 8. Clear, students? Now, applying the same formula, we will find the mass of 0 0.5 mole of water molecule. Okay, so students, let's say this is question number two, okay? So the answer, or answer to the question, that will be uh, now, we have to find the mass, okay? We have to find the mass. And now, they have, uh, from the question itself, the number of mole is given, that is 0 0.5, right? And the molar mass, the molar mass, that is, I've written mm, okay? This means the mo molecular mass would, uh, would be, uh, we'll take for water, okay? Now, we all know that it is hydrogen, the atomic mass is one, right? So one into two plus 16, okay? So now we'll have two plus 16, it means 18. Clear? So now, you, do you remember the formula that, that we have discussed? The formula is, the formula is given mass by molar mass. Clear? So now we have this number of mole is given, right? It is 0 0.5. Clear? And then we have to find this one, given mass. This is what we have to find. And then the molar mass we got 18, right? So, now uh, given mass, for given mass, we have to multiply this one, 0 0.5 into 18, clear? So we will get this much. So this is how we calculate the moles and the mass using this formula, okay? Using this formula. So here, what is important is this formula. Number of mole is uh, equal to given mass by molar mass. Okay, so students, we will end with this atomicity. Now, atomicity means number of atoms uh, in a molecule, okay, of elements or a compound. Now, let's say, if I have helium, okay? Now helium is, we find helium in just a single form, okay? Helium is just single. So we'll say this is monoatomic, monoatomic. Okay, only one means 
mono. Clear? Mono. Now, uh, students, oxygen exists in pair, okay, O2. So, this is, we'll call diatomic. Diatomic. Di means two. Clear? And then, the last one is polyatomic, okay? Polyatomic. Polyatomic. Now, polyatomic means having more than two, okay? Having like more than three. If we write H2O, it will also be a polyatomic because now we have three, right? So now you know the difference between monoatomic, diatomic, and polyatomic. Mono means one, di means two, and more than two means it will be polyatomic. Clear? So students, we, uh, we have completed this chapter that is uh, atoms and molecule, but uh, in this chapter is very important. You have to calculate all the numericals, you have to practice the numericals, and all the small, small points that were the facts that we have di uh, discussed, you have to keep in mind, okay? And the fourth chapter, that is structure of atom, is just the continuation of the third chapter. Clear? So now we'll discuss, we'll start our new chapter, that is, uh, that is chapter four, that is structure of atom. Okay, so students, now this is a new chapter, chapter four, structure of atom. Okay, now we are all uh, aware uh, with the size, the mass about, uh, of the atom, right? But do you know, are you aware and familiar with the structure of atom? Clear? Now it's a long journey, okay, it's a long journey. Now uh, in the last class we have discussed about uh, Dalton's atomic theory, right? But it was also, uh, there, there's also a drawback regarding that. Clear? So now chemistry is like that. So some, one scientist discovered this and, the, and then next comes the other scientist and he will make some correction, okay? And then, so it's, it's a journey until unless we get a perfect result. Clear? So now uh, for the structure of atom, actually we start from uh, Goldstein to Thomson to Rutherford and then we get uh, from Bohr's, and then we get the structure of atom. But here, to make it very easy and to make it very simple, clear? Now, let me show you the present day, okay? Now, the present day atom, how it looks like. And let's see the journey, clear? So the present day atom looks like, like this, okay? It's like a sphere. And then, you will, we will see an orbit. Okay, a layer. Okay, we'll see an orbit like this. And then in the middle, okay, in the center, in the middle, we'll have a nucleus. A nucleus. This is nucleus. Clear. And in this nucleus, there we have what? Protons. Protons. Plus. Okay, proton. Plus. So now, uh, this together, okay? So now, this is a nucleus, and now we have here neutrons and protons, right? We have neutrons, neutrons, and protons. So to, protons and neutrons together, we call it as nucleons. Nucleons. Clear? These two together, we call it as nucleons. This is a nucleus, and inside this, we have what? protons and neutrons. And then, what about the electrons? Electrons, that means the minus, right? So we'll find electrons here, okay? And then, they will revolve, okay? So the present, uh, in the present day, the atomic structure looks like this. Okay, so students, we will uh, start from the beginning, the history, okay? So now, first let's start uh, with the J.J. Thomson model of atom. Okay, J.J. Thomson model of atom. Okay. So now, this famous scientist, Thomson, he discovered electrons, okay? He discovered what? Electrons. Now, electrons is not a new word for you, because like, now we, we are going to study about this in detail, okay? Now, so Thomson discovered these electrons. 
and then uh, Thompson also gave an uh, gave us an idea. Okay, he also now the structure that I have shown you just now, that is the present day atoms. It looked like this. Okay, but we did not achieve the structure. We did not get the structure just like that in a snap. It's a long. It has been a long journey. Okay, many scientists have discovered there has been many drawback. So Thomson was one such scientist, and that's why we have we are going to study about the Thomson model of an atom, and the structure. Okay, the model that he gave was a sphere. Okay, a sphere. Now. Before I draw a model, let me give you an example. Have you ever seen a watermelon like slice? Clear? Now in a watermelon slice, you will see that uh, the eatable part will all be red, right? Let's say this white portion is the eatable part. And then you will see a small, small seeds embedded in it. Right? This is how, okay, the color does not match, but you have to imagine. Okay, for science, you have to imagine. So now you have to imagine this one as a watermelon slide. So now this white portion are the eatable one. You have to imagine this one as a red color. Okay, and now these seeds, these are the seeds, okay, black in color. So Thompson, he gave an example uh, of watermelon. He said that this, the eatable part, okay, the red part, these are the positively charged clear and then the seeds which are embedded in it he said these are the electrons okay these are the electrons that means the minus clear that means the minus so that was so that that is how electron word came into being first electron came into being through this thomson model of atom given by J.J. Thompson itself. That's how this word is known till today. Clear? So now these electrons, now according to him, will find embedded like in a in in the positive uh, in the positive part. That is the eatable part. Okay. But have you seen the present? I have discussed. Okay. The the present day atoms actually the positive part is just in the center, right? And then the minus revolve around, right? Electrons. But it is wrong, right? Because uh, according to him, maximum part constitute of the positive part. But the present day structure, the positive is just here. So this model is also a failure. Okay. But this has paved a way for other scientists to come up with new ideas and make corrections. So now we will study about the drawback and advantage of the Thomson model of atoms in the next class. For now, just go through uh, in the textbook, there is uh, JJ Thomson model of atom. Uh, they have given uh, some points, some limitations. So just go through that and not done whatever we have discussed. Clear? So I'll see you in the next class. Thank you so much, students.